I thought I might be able to give you a quick video preview of what I'm working on since I can't share the code with you. Now the software is still in development, so we still have a lot of bugs, but I wanted to show you something in particular that I loved being able to do with this project using React and Redux. Right now the program's running through the tutorial, so that should give you a good general idea of how it's laid out and how it works. Now the core concept behind MathCraft is that you help guide a robot stranded on a crashed spaceship by helping the robot solve simple math and engineering problems. And to do this, you use the math panel, which is what I'm building out. Uh, there, the robot, in reality, Sykes AI, works through the math problems, but makes the same kind of mistakes that middle school students tend to do. When she's unsure about a step, you can send a text to her, and she'll take your advice and proceed from there. Now, when I inherited the project, it was relatively small and manageable, if not strictly separated by concerns. But the problem was... I was being asked to add a lot of new features that weren't in the original plan, and as I added them, the code became more convoluted and unwieldy, and eventually I realized that I really needed a state manager of some sort if I wanted to continue adding additional features. Um, now, I chose Redux because of a very specific problem we had at Sitecore. Now, because the back end is an artificial intelligence, it's going to learn and change its answers depending on what has come before. So you can't expect the same request sent to the back end to result in the same response. Now this made debugging a huge problem as some recurring errors were it just impossible to reproduce on demand. But with Redux, we can not only manage the front end state, but with an immutable store, you could just dispatch actions to Redux's reducers and then just keep a log of those actions through middleware and faithfully reproduce the end user's entire experience simply by replaying those actions in order. Now, when I pitched this idea to Sitecore, it was a bit of a risk to spend a lot of time refactoring the program, but they let me go ahead, and I think the investment in time and energy has paid off. Uh, we are able to recreate the user experience from start to finish exactly, and that's reduced debugging times for some of our harder bugs from weeks to hours. And because the code was written to be modular and reusable, much of this math panel code is going to be used in other Sitecore projects in the future. Now, there's still a lot of bugs to iron out. We're still in, uh, in pre-alpha, but progress is going a lot more quickly than it did before. Um, we're releasing the public alpha in June, and we wanted to make it simple for users to give us bug reports, so I created a one-button bug reporting tool, which contains all the data we need to create any user's problem. It, it even created a JIRA issue at one point, but our security team wasn't 100% sure they could help me secure that connection, so I scoped that back until we can get more information on that. Now here's the cool part. To replay the experience, all our developers need to do is paste either the ID of the entry in the database or a unique hash that is generated and sent to the backend to replay every action. Then they can go back to a specific point in time, play through the actions one by one, and isolate the bugs by determining what exactly caused the error. Now, right now, uh, I'm building out a feature that's take it, taking it a step further. Uh, we're going to automatically detect when an error condition occurs and send the logging information back to our database automatically without any user interaction necessary. We do alert them that we're collecting non-identifying debugging data, but essentially, it just they don't even have to think about it. Now, there's a few things in this project I wish I had done differently, but I'm glad I had the chance to learn from them. Uh, for example, we needed a log of API requests and responses. I put that in the store itself when really, if I had known more about it at the time, it would be cleaner and easier to build out some middleware and log it that way. And in my API functions, I import the store directly in order to do a store dispatch. I probably should have just uh, added in the dispatch and get state methods through dependency injection it would have made testing a lot easier. And I think I might have benefited from using uh, asynchronous action creators. Uh, right now, I do have uh, asynchronous uh, functions, but those functions dispatch actions using store dispatch. And I'm not sure that would have been the right way to go. That said, I'm documenting all the design decisions I'm making and the design decisions I would have made in hindsight so that I or another engineer after that uh, June release goes out, we can go back and improve the code base, uh, you know, and, and still have a pretty good idea where we are. 